that's that's those, that's real. Like that's not, that was kind of fun. What number combine is this for you? Do you know? As a scout? As everything. Oh, as everything. Mm -hmm. um, it's my tenth. Nine is a scout and one is a player. Okay. And it is amazing how fast time goes. <laughs> Very fast. What is it like being here in different capacities, I guess? So it's actually gotten a lot better now for me because, like I said, this is my ninth as a scout. Uh, and. I didn't re really remember what it was like to go through as a player. Really? You don't remember it? Going to my first one as a non-player. Okay. And then I got here and then it like literally just hit me and it was like, wow, time has flown by. It's, it's been 16 years since I was here as a, okay, as a player and then, and then I literally relived everything when I started going through things on the scouting side. Uh, with the, the interviews and, and seeing the players, uh, you know, it's changed to several degrees, but seeing the players go through the interviews, seeing the players go through the, the, the workouts on the field, mm -hmm. I was like, gosh, it was not too long ago when, when I was there, but then when you actually look at the years, it was a long time. Uh, so it, it, it's a little surreal. What was it like as a player? What, what was your biggest takeaway? A lot of guys, you know, you hear it's mentally exhausting, you're waking up at crazy hours, it's just like a non-stop, however many days, two, three days. It is mentally and physically exhausting. Uh, first, you come from the West Coast and you come out to Indianapolis, so you have a three hour time change. And some of these guys are getting up at five and six in the morning. So for a guy from Seattle that gets up at six in the morning in Indianapolis, that's oh, yeah. 3 a.m. their time. And your body clock is, is going through some challenges and you, literally your days start early and they end extremely late. The, the last interviews usually conclude about 10 p.m. at night. Uh, so you have everything from the, uh, the physical evaluations, the medical evaluations, the psychological evaluations, um, and, and you're getting pulled and, and yanked in so many different directions by medical staff, by coaches, because coaches want to interview you um, both formally and informally. Mm -hmm. uh, and you literally are like a chicken with your head chopped off because you have a director, a, a group leader that's directing you with things that you have to be at and then you have other people that will try to pull you aside and say, hey, let, let's grab this 10 or 15 minute interview and get that out of the way. And then you're like, but I am supposed to be here. No, don't worry, you have time. Right. And you actually don't have time. So it's, it's quite overwhelming, it really is. How much has changed in terms of what the players are actually doing? I know from the media, the outside world, it's more visible because it's on TV all the time and more eyes are on it. But has the actual evaluation process changed in terms of what you do as an evaluator? Uh, the field evaluation has not changed. But as far as an evaluator and remembering what I went through as a player here, that aspect, the three hours that you're involved with the, the actual field work has not changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the medical evaluation is the same. Right. They're, they're still gonna wanna check to see if you had any challenges or any, any issues. Um, uh, the outside things with regards to the amount of uh, commitments that they're asking the players to do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, media obligations, interviews, um, maybe there's additional about uh, psychological evaluations. Maybe there's more time for interviews with the players. Uh, that that I would believe has changed. I think you told me um, prior to this that there are a lot of people who are very traditional where they sit in terms of Lucas Oil Stadium. Maybe what they do. Do you have any? Not I don't want to say superstitions, but do you have anything that you do every single year here at the combine? So I have a few roles, but my my role during the workouts are to time the twenties. And um, every player, we, we have someone that timed the 10s. Mm -hmm. Mike Butler does the 10s, I do the 20s. And then uh, we have a, a lot of our folks down at the, at the 40, you know, with Kevin and Brandon and Phil. Uh, David's job is to get the times and give them to, to Kevin. Kevin writes everything down. Mm -hmm. And my job is to make sure that I do not miss one of those 20s. <laughs> and I'm a little superstitious. I, I kind of try to sit in the same seat. And over the years, there's been the same group of scouts that have sat in that section. So we have an affiliation to each other. And it's nice to see everybody and catch up. And, and uh, I always try to sit in the same spot. I always have a bag on the left side of me. <laughs> and I have my stopwatch. And I have my, my two, uh, two pins just in case one of them goes out. And then I have my clipboard with my sheet. So 
I would, prepared. I would say I'm not superstitious, but I really am, and I'm prepared <laughs> because I have to be. And I never want to make sure, let anything happen to where I miss a time or, or don't give the, the right information. But I will say that I know Kevin looks at those times, but I've never been asked in a, in a meeting when we're evaluated player, what was this 20 time? But there's going to be a time when that's going to happen. And you'll and, be ready. And I need to make sure that I'm ready. <laughs> because when, as soon as you let your guard down just one time, then that's when it comes back. And back. Is there a player that the Steelers have drafted, your time with the team as a scout, that you remember something distinctly about them at the Combine that was maybe like a wow factor? Well, there's been some players that I've really liked that we've drafted that I've been excited about. You know, David DeCastro is, is one in particular. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster that we drafted a couple years ago uh, is, is a player that I thought was going to be a, a, have a great workout. He had a, a great workout and I was like, yes. Because mm -hmm. you have your high expectations and, and you're going to have your report that you're going to read. And if you're excited about the guy, they're going to feel it. But then the workout has to back up with what you're saying in your words. And so to me, that, that was a good thing. Um, me being a University of Washington alum, and watching John Ross, uh, the, the wide receiver that the Bengals drafted, uh, you know, run as well as he did, I was like, man, I know this guy's going to be fast. And, and you know, my alma mater, my heart is like, <laughs> man, I hope this guy does well. And he goes and blows it out of the water. So that those are some kind of exciting things for me.